Hi everyone! Welcome to Quick Preach, your online channel for short messages about God. Now today, we are starting with our series entitled, Weather Weather Lang. Now, Weather Weather Lang is a play of the Filipino phrase, Panapanahon, which indirectly translates to, There is a Time for Everything. Now, this five-part series will begin with Part 1, Stormy Days. Now, before I begin, I would also like to acknowledge my main references for this preaching, the NIV Bible and the All-Weather Preaching Series by Victory Church Philippines, from which most of the points were adopted from. Now, let's begin. Do you like stormy days? Now, provided I am in a safe place, sometimes I do. What do you usually do inside the house during stormy weather? As for me, I'd like to curl up in a ball and have a really good sleep inside my bedroom and be surrounded by pillows, probably be under the sheets. But here's a tougher question to answer. Would you still like it when you're outside in the middle of a storm? Probably not. Located along the Pacific Typhoon Belt, the Philippines is visited by an average of 15 to 20 typhoons every year. Now, from the top of my head, I can remember some of the most destructive storms such as, well, there's Yolanda, also known as Typhoon Haiyan. I can remember Glenda. There's also Ondoy. And uh, when I was in college, I think it was Milenio. Now, each one of us is very much like the Philippines in the sense that we are regularly visited by storms in life. Storms are often used as metaphors for problems, trials, and sufferings. And because we know by experience that storms do not really last forever, the more important question when we are experiencing storms in life is not when will they end, but more of how do we respond to these storms. Being a Christian does not guarantee a struggle-free life. When Saul became Paul and started preaching about Jesus, he was not exempted from trials. Paul was rejected. He was also stoned and dragged outside the city. Paul was stripped and beaten with rods. He was even imprisoned. He was also trapped in a storm at sea. He even got stranded on an island and bitten by a snake, among others. Now, as you can see, Paul encountered so much hardships in life. But how did Paul survive these storms? Now, at this point, I want you to pause this video, get your Bible, and read Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 to 30 and i would like you to put greater emphasis on verses 12 to 26 now that you've finished reading let's proceed so how did paul survive the storms in his life main point number one paul magnified christ during stormy days now let's have a look at Philippians 1, 18a. 18 says, But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether false motives are true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Paul knew that where he is, whether in a good or bad situation, or what he feels, hurt, or happy, is not what is important. According to Paul, what matters more is that in every circumstance, our lives continue to become testimonies about Christ. 
when Paul was rejected, he continued to preach about Christ. When Paul was imprisoned, he sang hymns to God with Silas. When Paul was bitten by a snake, he healed the sick in the name of Christ. Paul cared more of how others will see his Savior than his own situations. Now, you may ask, isn't that selfish of Christ for us to think of him rather than ourselves? Well, when we welcomed Christ in our hearts, we no longer own our lives. The days we spent on earth are shorter than the afterlife. Hence, every single day, even stormy days, must be dedicated to expand the kingdom of God on earth. Whenever we, fe- we face trials or hardships, our goal is to still exalt Christ. Main point number two. Paul trusted God during stormy days. Let's have a look at Philippians 1, 18b-19. Second part of 18 says, Yes, and I will continue to rejoice. Verse 19, For I know that through prayers and God's provision of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. Now, if there is one action I can associate Paul with, it's rejoicing. If you know some of the verses. Now, while many of us tend to express our anger, doubt, fear, and defeat to God in times of problems, Paul, on the other hand, delighted himself in the Lord so much that joy took over him despite the tragedies he experienced. Paul's joy is rooted to his trust in God. He placed his faith in the hands of God and allowed the Lord to take control of circumstances. And since then, Paul was assured of his salvation in every situation. Now similarly, we will gain this type of security when we learn to be still in the midst of our storms. So whenever Paul uh, faced trials, he remained calm and trusted everything to the Lord. Main point number three. Paul served others during stormy days. Let's have a look at Philippians 1, 25-26. Verse 25 says, Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. Verse 26, so that through my being with you again, your boasting in Christ, Jesus will abound on account of me. Now, while many of us tend to think about ourselves during the toughest times, Paul demonstrated that it is better to be selfless. Why? Because just as a candle burns brightly in a dark room, thinking less of oneself and more of others in our darkest times, lets Christ shine brighter. To be kind to others when everything is going well in our lives is earthly. But to be kind to others in the midst of our own storms, now that is heavenly. Paul served others so that he can be a better testimony to the goodness of Christ. And we should do the same. Whenever we are faced with trials, we should be able to serve others so that they too will be inspired and see the goodness of the Lord. Now we go to our conclusion. While it is easier to complain and to simply request God to address our problems through prayer, A real follower of Christ will brave the storms of life by magnifying Christ, not the problem, 
trusting God by letting go and serving others, not oneself. Now, these are actions that Paul did. Now, thank you very much for finishing this video. If you enjoyed this preaching, click the like button and share to others. If you have any comments or suggestions or would like me and my colleagues to pray for you, you may use the comment section or email us at quickpreach at gmail.com. Now, if you wish to watch more short messages like this, subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications to be reminded if a new video has been uploaded. God bless everyone!